Support Our Sinclair and listen ad-free. Go to patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC Future from the future was 8bit.com. Quit waiting on tapes and fooling around with WAV files and load your games instantly with the Div MMC Future, a jumperless, switchless SD storage solution for all ZX Spectrums, from the 16K all the way to the plus three. Get yours today at the future was 8bit.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Match Day 2. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Was there a Match Day 1? Yeah, there was. Was there? I wonder why we skipped that one and went right to the second one. I can tell you why. Oh, okay, go. The dudes in Match Day 1, Yeah. you don't want to be controlling those dudes. <laughs> what was wrong with them? Did you try Match Day 1? I, I watched some video of Match Day 1. Yeah. Because I accidentally loaded it into the uh, the footage for this show yeah. at first, it is not looking good mm. for match day one. I see. Yeah. So, so yeah. they clearly they just they skipped right over the dud. We made yeah. the right move going with match day two. Well, it was the people. The people made the move. We yeah. don't know nothing. That's true. Clive's club making it happen. Um, Aaron, tell me about your first brush with the great game of football. Easy. You didn't think I'd have an answer for this, but I you did. You got an answer for everything, man. That's why I've been doing the show five years. When I was a little kid, back in the day, I knew of soccer. I had seen the ball, mm -hmm. you know. And soccer meant one thing to me. Pele. One thing, Pele. That's right. You're right. That's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. In this country, Pele was soccer. Yeah. When where Pele you... played, I don't have any, I don't know anything about Pele. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. You know, what I can I don't know what country he's from. I don't know what he did to be so famous. I've got no idea. I'm Everybody sure people, knew are, him, though. people are shaking their hands. Pele, we all know him. Here's mm -hmm. what he, but I don't know anything. But I mean, in this country, Pele did commercials. Mm -hmm. Pele did guest spots. Pele was everywhere. Pele, P E L E, with some doodads over it. Yep. Pele. And so, when Pele was gone, no one gave a crap about soccer. That was it. And in fact, I didn't care much about soccer when he was here, but I, we knew Pele. Right. It was like when Pele rolled in, the soccer craze started, and when Pele rolled out, the soccer craze left with him. Yeah. And so, then you had uh, uh, nothing. And so, the only thing I remember about soccer, I remember watching a movie one time, and it had so Pele was in it, of course, because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to watch it without him, and it had Sylvester Stallone. And it was this about these guys in a concentration camp in World War II that took on a team of like German soldiers in a soccer game in a big stadium. But it was all a cunning plan to do something. I don't remember the plot exactly, <laughs> but I remember Stuart Stallone and Pele were in it. Mm -hmm. So that I remember that from soccer. And then skip forward like thir like twenty years. All right, remember that movie Bend It Like Beckham? Mm -hmm. Okay, I knew who Beckham That's was. That's more like thirty years. Yeah, I knew who yeah. Beckham was. Yeah. Right, because he had a good looking wife, and he was this big time soccer player and I'd seen that movie because remember when you you probably don't remember this there was a time where like you could download a movie a gray movie and you were like oh I downloaded a movie you, know, watch you don't know what it was right mm -hmm. Blair Witch was one I did that tell told that story and I downloaded this movie called Bend It Like Becca I didn't know it was a soccer movie but I had I was like well I, I'll download this sucker it took me six hours I'm gonna watch it so I watched that so I knew who Beckham was from that. And so I, Beckham was in that movie. For like two seconds. Mm. But it's a good I, movie. I haven't seen Beck, Minute Like Beckham. Yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. It's play. not like a biopic. It's about these two girls that like soccer. Okay. Right? Uh, so I watched that. And then, this is all the important soccer moments in my life. The final one, Shaolin Soccer. This is a great movie where these uh, monks use their monkey and powers to play soccer against this team of steroided up mutant players. Before or after Kung Fu Hustle? Uh, this would have been before, mm. I think. Kung Fu Hustle, I liked as well. Kung same, Fu Hustle is great. Same bunch of guys. Great. I like Shaolin Soccer better. Mm. I will say that. So I'll have to watch that because yeah, I love good. Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, so there you go. And that's it. I mean, I, I'd heard about other stuff. I knew there were games for soccer. I knew uh, of FIFA, and I knew about indoor soccer. That was sort of a thing in America yeah, for indoor. a while. Mm -hmm. But really, soccer was never... Uh, and, I mean, here recently, people, you know mostly college types are into soccer. They yeah. crowd up into bars, watch the World Cup and stuff, but generally it's still not a... They've tried to push it, it for years. It's sort of a hipster sport. Yeah. 
Yeah. I wouldn't go say that because I thought you'd light into me. But no, yeah, it's sort I agree. of yeah. It's not a man. Sort of like sport. well, no, I'm not saying that. Listen, soccer players are studs. They're tough. They have to have great cardio. You don't lie. You're just afraid of the hoop. No, listen. You're afraid they'll come at you. Let's face facts. All right. Could I go out and play football right now? Yes. Right, because you get to rest, you got pads. Are you talking about football or football? I'm talking football, like hut, hut, okay. throw a football. Okay. Could I go out and play? Uh, could I go out and play baseball? Sure. Yeah, even a big fat guy could do that. Oh yeah. Could I go out and play soccer? No. No. <laughs> Not no. unless I was the goalie. That'd be yeah. the only way I the could do it. The thing about American sports is most American sports. There's a position on the team. Yeah. You know, maybe not at the professional level. The but dumb guy yeah, position. The, yeah, yeah. Where you just have to be a big doofus and you can do it. Just look at Buddy Bell. That guy weighed 300 pounds and he played for like the Oakland Athletics for 30 years. <laughs> And, or pitch. Yeah. All the pitchers. You know, oh, yeah. Gaylord, Wells, Perry, and all yeah. those big fat guys go out there. But, you know, soccer, you have to have... Listen, I've got ultimate respect for soccer players, hockey players, Australian North football players, mm -hmm. rugby. Those guys are real men. They're all men. Yeah, they are. And they're killers, and they're tough. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, no disrespect. I'll tell you about my experience with yeah. soccer. Okay? There was nothing, and then there was the 94 World Cup. Do you remember Alexi Lawless? Does that name ring a bell? It rings a bell, yeah. He was this red-haired dude, and All he right. played for USA. Yeah. I'm not fully convinced that any of the players on the USA team were actually from the USA, but Alexi Lawless... It's a cultural he, stew. Yeah, yeah. He was a... And, a, and I remember watching all the games on the way to the pool at the FMC club. You know where the FMC club is, I actually right? lifeguarded there a couple of times. Yeah, so <laughs> we, I got this little portable TV for my birthday. Yeah, ooh, and fancy. And I remember it ran on D batteries, mm. and me and my friend would watch the World Cup games on the way to the FMC pool. You guys are geeks. That, that's yeah. it. That's it as far as soccer that's it? goes, though. That's all I've got. It's funny, because when a World Cup happens, like there's a small portion of the country that goes nuts. I do, I do, I do actually, I do, I do take it back. In 2010, yeah. the first game that England played in the World Cup was against the United States. Yeah. And I was living in England at the time. Who were you rooting for? I was rooting for the U.S. and United States. Oh. I came in with my Uncle Sam hat. I went into the pub. It was me and this that other girl. That sounds dangerous to me. It was dangerous. I felt afraid for my life. Yeah. But uh, but that th those are the two <laughs> things. Those are the 94 and 2010. Yeah, well, so, so we both have a checkered past with we're, soccer. We're coming at this from possibly not the best uh, background, but I think that uh, because we're not totally immersed in the world of soccer, if you haven't seen the Kim Justice, uh, she she reviews this soccer game from the PS1. It's the greatest soccer video game review I've ever seen in my life because she goes in and she talks about they have like an FMV sequence, or it's actually a rendered sequence of like this this British town with all like betting shops and boarded up windows. And she talks about how like all these people do is live for football. And it reminded me of Sheffield because Sheffield was the same way. It's just a real depressed, like former you know steel town and stuff. So anyway, check out that Kim Justice video. It'd be sort of like Green Bay when the Packers are around, except not all ch jut up, you right? Know, you know, not Absolutely. boarded up. Yeah. yeah. So match day two, Aaron. Why don't we talk about it a little bit? So this uh, bad boy was released in 87, of course, published by Ocean, because why not? Why right? not? Now, the programmer uh, on this was a fellow named John Rittman. Now, we've actually uh, covered uh, a game or two of his. He did Batman. He did <laughs> Bear Bo Bover. I I'd like to see what that is. Cosmic Debris. Forb a planet, and the one I remember, Head Over Heels, mm -hmm. was one he did. Uh, the graphics on this were a fellow named Bernie Drummond. He also did Head Over Heels and Batman, and the music from a guy named Guy. Guy Stevens. Gee is how they say it. Oh, that. is that the... I like Guy. There's no, one, there's no one on Earth that pronounces their name Guy something. I think people, Americans, pronounce it yeah. Guy until they get reach a certain age and they realize it should be Gee. Really? Yeah. Well, he, a Gee here was responsible for the Adams Family, Boat. I picked that out especially for you. Thank you. So, what you got here is your old-fashioned throw, soccer throwdown with some twists. Uh, you can play one or two players. That right there is a big deal just in itself. Mm -hmm. You can play two players. Um... You've got all the interfaces. This thing has, uh, I wish every game had the uh, wealth of options for controls. This thing had everything. I played this with a keyboard, of course, and it's set up perfectly. It's the way I want it. I love that. I like it when it's easy. Um, so uh, this game was one, of course, this wasn't the first match day boat, as we know. You got your match day, you got match day three, and you got match day two. And these... <laughs> Odd how they named them that yeah. way. Yeah. And you've got... Um, 
you've got these games out on the Amstrad. What is the, you know, this is something I've never seen before. You got your Amstrad CPC, right? This is out on the Amstrad PCW. What is that? No idea. Never heard of that before. Anybody want to? That might be a typo chime on Wikipedia. In there. PCW. That's not. It, that's not that crazy. What was the name of that Amstrad console? Was that something? that was something else? All right. Uh, of course, the Spectrum and the MSX and the C64. So this got a pretty pretty broad release. Now, um, let's talk about this game. Uh, you're presented with a, a goodly amount of options uh, when you load this thing mm -hmm. up. Like I said, a, a, aside from controller options and. What not? I, I just went with your old, the old standard fair you know, play options here. You can set it up if you want your goalie to be computerized, which I did. Which that was an ill-advised maneuver. No, you want to have full control. Yeah, the goalie, the computerized goalie, I, as I found out through my first game, he's not not so good. No, you know, and although really with me being goalie, I wasn't so good either. I, 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 I did pretty well as goalie. I blocked a couple shots. So what you got here? First of all, when the game starts, for whatever reason. Struck me as funny. The first thing you hear is the game is is it starts playing when the Saints go marching in. Did you did you notice that? <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. I forgot to turn on the sound when I played this game. Played, so <laughs> I was sitting there. It's like dee 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 dee. Just your peppy version when the Saints. I thought to myself, what is there? there Nothing must gets be, you pumped for a good well, football I, what match. What I was thinking is maybe there's some sort of connection between that song and song. Maybe so is because you know how there's chants that go on. I'm sure you've you've heard about this before. Where yeah, they, yeah. They, they get back and forth, and maybe maybe that melody is used in some sort of obscene <laughs> chant against the other team. This I just thought that was really odd. You know, so. Uh, so I should mention the loading screen on this thing, uh, according to what I found, was a featured a guy named Gary uh, Lineker. All right, so there you go. I guess he's a big soccer guy. Mm. I'm sure people that know something about soccer were, are like, "Oh God, yeah, yes, I Lineker." Don't know. It doesn't ring a bell. So anyway, you've got your uh, you've got your when your Saints go marching in, and then the game starts. So. You can play left, yeah, much like I say an archon or a chess game. You can pick which team you want to play, left team or right team, which is cool. Mm -hmm. you, and you can it, it, actually the setup for this is great. You can have, uh, you can pick the computer for either side. You can pick a human for either side. You can, and there are some options you can set. And then you take off. So this game actually does some things right. Uh, there's a there's a sort of like a, a continuously pulsing like meter at the top of the screen. And this is sort of like how hard you kick the ball. Right. And if you look, you you use it right away to start the festivities. And, it, and it's important to notice that, or it's important to, to, to know that this meter, it's not like most meters where like you push the button down and that activates the meter. <laughs> right. This meter is going 24-7. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's like uh, if you, if, uh, if your, uh, if your copy of uh, uh, golf was out of control. Right. It's just the meter just keeps going. Yeah. And so, but what is neat about this is is the meters at the top of the screen, but also they're over the the player you control is a little tiny version of that meter. Mm -hmm. And so, if you can't be bothered to look up at the top of the screen to see the meter, you've got the tiny little meter. It's fantastic. It, that's a. It's great. Listen, I I got to give him credit on that uh, because it gives you sort of an. Uh, a level of control in a game this old that I would not have expected. I mm -hmm. just put it that way. We, you got to think in '83, that's early in the game. Yeah, and it so is. you're this getting is a year after the Spectrum launch. Yeah, you're getting you're getting something pretty clever there. So whoever came up with that system, that's that's pretty brilliant. I it think it is in that one. Um, you control your uh, what is it? A, is it a squad of care? How do you? It's a squad. Is that what it yeah. is? And yeah, of course, if you surely people by now know how to play soccer. The the, the the field scrolls. Listen again; these things sound lame, but I mean, think of like TV sports basketball, for example. It doesn't scroll the field yeah. at all. This well, is well. It's it's funny that you mention that because yeah. I really believe that this is kind of the football version of TV sports basketball. Uh, TV sports basketball, of course, is sort of famous for being a thinking man's basketball game. It moves on the slower side. It allows you a lot of time for you know thinking and planning. This game is is in that same vein versus a game like the 16-bit soccer games like uh, Kickoff or Sensible Soccer where the oh, action yeah. is hot and heavy yeah, all the time. You know, I hadn't thought about it, but you're right. This, uh, comparing this to TV Sports Basketball is an excellent idea because it is. This is uh, your the thinking man's laid-back pace. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean it's like, it's not snail pace It's not bereft slow, of action. But it is it is slow. But, now, but that, what that does, it's, listen, it's perfect for people like us, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I, I am not good enough to know the positions in soccer. Like, I, know I know there, there are you, you some. You got your wing. 
that you do. Yeah. And then what, what's the guy in the background there? That's the that guy that's in front of the goalie. What's that the guy? That's guard. Is, yeah, guard. <clears throat> and then you guys in the middle. What are they like? The midfield. The prancer. The, oh, they're mid midfield. Okay. Midfieldmen. So not prancers. I don't know where I got that. So and apparently, you know, as far as I could tell, with my limited soccer knowledge, <clears throat> you uh, the players sort of stick to their positions. But did you? Would you agree with that? Uh, no. I mean, like they all sort of. When you're on defense, yes. But when you're on offense, it's all hands on deck. Everybody's rushing towards the goal. They're, they're acting like soccer players. Yeah. This game's AI for both the computer and your your guys is pretty good. Your guys tend to move where you want them to be. So, for example, if you come on a fast break, which in soccer they call a foost break. they um, Really? No. Oh. Um, they uh, your, your, players, your players will come up. Like, if you come up on the corner or you come up you know, on the side of the goal, you'll have a guy there for the cross where you can kick it over to him and then he can head it in or he can kick it in. Yeah, I found that to be very, very good. Now, of course, your tactics here are pretty elementary. You're not gonna be setting a lot of different field positions, nowhere close to what you can do in a game like kickoff. But I found that in, if you're trying to score, your players are not there to hinder you. They, they mostly help you. You know, I'm looking at this uh, that we're again we're watching a, a little video that's up here. My one of the problems I don't think my I had the same background colors as this. I, I think my I had a, mine was like a different color. Okay, I'll tell you why that is. Okay, if you go into the options, yeah. you can choose a pitch color. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that would explain. And it so you can choose. I think green. Well, yeah, that's what well, mine was. Yeah, green is the default. But in the video that we're watching, they've chosen black. And I, I, after I watched this video, I went back and started playing on black. And black is my preferred pitch color just because it puts everything into a really good contrast where you yeah. can see where everything is really well. Well, one of the things I've noticed is when I played this, uh, I, of course, this is the specky. And so when guys get close together, they sort of become each other's colors. Sure, yeah. And that... If you get a pile of guys, it could, that is one thing that drove me nuts. It gets a little hairy. It gets confusing as heck. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, honestly, and I usually I don't I ignore that. It's not a big deal. But it, the color clash this it didn't do this game any favors. It was that made it much uh, to me. Uh, it, it annoyed me to say the least. And sometimes it just uh, down and out confused me uh, because when you get especially when you're running down the, the pitch and you're trying to uh, uh, get you know get your guys in position and you're running through guys and they looked about they looked the same. It was it was that was a hassle. Mm -hmm. So I would say I didn't like that. Now, one of the things I did like was uh, one thing this thing does, and I really uh, this is something a more modern soccer game would do. I don't know if I I can't think of any. I don't think. I mean, listen, someone's going to correct me, but I can only play what I play. I, this lets you physically block out other players with your. I mean, your guy. Well, yeah, you can, can set picks. Is, for he sure. can be in position. Yeah, and he and he has the outside edge. Of, uh, yeah, on the there, inside there, edge, and it works. You don't go through the guy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there, there's a there's a Nintendo soccer game called NES World Cup that's made by Technos, the same mm -hmm. guy that the, the same guys that made uh, River City Ransom. All the guys look like the River City Ransom guys. Yeah. you can set picks in the same way too. Um, so that this, I think that that's more common in your 2D or I'm sorry, your your like side on games. You can set those things up versus in the top down games like kickoff or goal or whatever. It's you don't see that as often. I uh, that that's the color. So yeah, we're watching the video to go to the color series. That, that that one was the one I usually take. It's I a shame that more games didn't include that. By the way, it's a good idea, it isn't is. it? To 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 allow that. Now, you could sort of name your team, you know, uh, which is kind of cool. But one thing I thought was weird. Now maybe you could. I didn't understand this either. So when you get to, get to the end of the first, uh, what is it, the period or or, or uh, uh, they call them halves. Halves or. Yeah. And it comes up, and it, and you're on the screen. It's got your score for whatever reason, and maybe I don't know. Maybe you can explain why you can do this. But I could go in and just add points to myself. I did not realize you could do that. <laughs> so I would just crank this. I don't know why. I was like, you're what a winner. I, I was like, what am I doing as I'm cranking this thing up? And so I, I'm hoping I'm confused because I can't think of a realistic way, reason that you would do that. Yeah, that's weird. That was strange. Uh, but uh, um, you know. It's a slow. I mean, let's let's be honest. It's a slow sort of plotting game. Yeah, it's slow. it's very slow. It's slow, but it's not like when you watch the animation of the guys. The game moves at a slow pace, but the game doesn't run slow. Does that make sense? Like, I don't think the game runs particularly slow. It's not like we just got done talking about 4D boxing, yeah. where the guys move glacially. 
these guys move, the, the game moves slowly, but when you watch the guys running, they're running at about the same speed that guys, you know, on an actual <laughs> soccer pitch would run. Versus the guys in like Sensible or Kickoff, it seems like they're moving at Mach 5. That, well, this is a much easier game. I, I had much more success. I sucked less, is a better way to put it. You've got, what you got here is six on six. And, and so they've, they've made the, the pitch fit that aspect of the game. Right. So you're right. right. When guys, I mean, don't get me wrong, these guys don't look like galloping stallions as they run down. Mm. They shamble down there like, like the, almost like kids or something. But it, it is in line with the size of the, of the play field. Mm -hmm. uh, the scrolling is nice and smooth. There's no problem there. Uh, the, uh, uh, the sound effects, are they're there. You hit a sound from when you hit the ball. There's a whistle sound. There's a sort of a cheer sound when you score. Yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to pay attention. I always get so. Uh, I always get so wrapped up whenever I play these games. Usually, I put on some rock and tunes because I know I'm not going to get any background music on the 48k Specky. Uh, but I, I should pay more attention uh, for for next week's game as we uh, to make sure that there's not any awesome sound effects I'm missing out on. Well, I mean, you're not. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. I, that, but I mean, it did have. It had. Let's put it this way: the sound was totally fine. I didn't, didn't like; it didn't offend me or anything. Um, one thing I think this game would make this game stand out, and I didn't, unfortunately I didn't get to do it, but this looks like a game that would be a lot of fun to play with two people. But I mean, they'd have to be two people that knew what they were getting into. Yeah. Like I couldn't sit down and play this with like Luke; it'd be it'd boring. Yeah. But I mean, I think this is a good game if you're not great at soccer or if you just want to have some fun. And, or it gives someone like me a chance to not suck. It's like suck. A, a leisurely game of soccer. That's right. I mean, yeah. really, I know a lot of people. I'm sure when this by now, by today's standards, when people look at this, they're like, oh god, look how slow. It, I mean, but I mean, if for setting up. Listen, I'm not a soccer guy, but I could actually pass the ball in this once I got into the once I understood how the meter worked. And the funny thing about the meter, we haven't mentioned, of course, the meter's always on. So when you've got the ball and you want to pass it to your teammate. You have to sort of hold it until the meter gets to where you want it. Yeah. Because yeah. you, otherwise you kick it too hard. It's part and, of the game. And so it's almost like a little mini game. It is. That's in there because the, while you're waiting for your meter to charge up and down, you're also running around. Yeah. You know, and the thing I like about this is that, for example, in, in other games of this ilk, you have to hold the button down for a certain amount, and then you'll, you, you know, the, right. the longer you hold it down. But you're never sure exactly how long that is. With the meter being there, in front of you 100% of the time, you can set it up to where, as long as you're willing to wait a little bit, you can set it up to have a perfect shot every time wherever you want it. I can see where people would hate the meter, mm -hmm. especially with no, uh, people that didn't grow up with this game. Probably they're used to, like you said, holding the button down for, a, a, you know, sort of like the way you shoot in TV sports basketball. And in a lot of ways, that's sort of probably a better system. But if you could incorporate a meter with that, then you really got something. Oh, but, yeah. But the meter in this is actually... Uh, this almost reminds me of like an almost like an arcadey soccer game because the, the meter makes it a little more, uh, uh, you know. Uh, to me, I thought that added to it actually. I like the meter a lot. And also, and something else, it, it lends itself to the, the little mini meter is so like that's totally unnecessary. That's what I always use. But such a great thing. I always you know? use that meter because I was trying to watch the play, but mm -hmm. it's you need that actually. But the game is so slow that adding the meter in sort of fills in the gaps of the of the does this make sense of the speed of the game mm -hmm. instead of just like oh I gotta run all the way down the field with this guy it gives you something to keep your eye on okay and I can line my shot up when this guy comes out that's exactly right does that make, that make sense absolutely I was wondering if I could actually aptly explain that without yeah. me sound like an idiot because you know there's nothing wrong with having mm -hmm. a slow game as long as you have something that can occupy your time in between points of action did you did you give this a lot of attention this yeah, week? Yeah, I, I played too. the heck out of this thing. I played this was my this was the game I played the most this week. Although I didn't play a lot of uh, uh, forty box, but I played this a lot. It's funny they have the similarities, like you said. But th this game is uh, real friendly to pick up. I didn't do great. I'm not gonna sit here and say I crushed it, but I could I could do okay. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I I don't know the rules of of soccer, and but apparently they didn't come into play. I. I I read that there's no offsides in this game, or is that what it is, offsides? Yeah, there's no offsides. And I know when the ball goes out of bounds, there's a throw in, you know, yeah. I know that stuff. Yeah. But pretty much, uh, that's pretty much all the stuff that you really need. Uh, that's all you can, need. As far as I can tell. So This is soccer pared down to its essentials. Yeah, but I mean, again, it, I'm not going to rage kill anyone that didn't like it. 
I will say the computer goalie to get back to that. I, I had no luck with the computer goalie. They they were no good. Apparently, I, I've read. I actually read a lot about strategy in this game. Really? And yeah. And Who it, wrote that? <laughs> but hey, there's a lot of Match Day Two fans out <laughs> really? there. Really? Okay. And apparently, the secret to this game, where you can literally score unlimited goals, is there's actually a window uh, on the field where if you go into this this window and you hit it with the precise speed. You'll score every single time. Oh no! So it's a game breaking yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, that is a so, bummer. And then it becomes like, how many points can you score on the other team? And that's the the match day two. The true aficionados, the true believers, they're just trying to rock up the, as many points as they can within the time. That makes allotted. it seem much lamer to me. Well, I'm glad I didn't know about yeah. that. So because I'm clearly, I'm guessing it didn't help you any. No. Yeah. No. That that that's that's a bummer. But I mean, but it's always you know the way that I feel about this game is sort of similar to the way that I feel about sensible soccer. Like, I played the heck out of this game, and I never once scored on the computer. Now, I did turn it on the old two-player mode and get a little action in. Yeah. But um, but I never... Yeah, we played that, too. But I, but I enjoyed playing this game, even though I was not able to score against the computer. Because I enjoy passing the ball down the field. I enjoy the slower pace and setting things up. And it's the same way when I used to play Sensible all the time on the, on the 360 when they released it there. It was so rare for me to score <laughs> on the computer, but I loved... It's like each time you go up and down the pitch, it's like a novella. You know what this sort of reminded me of in terms of the pace? You remember when we had a uh, computer game club, uh, Taze Valley uh, users group, and we played the Coco games. And remember we came across that soccer game mm-hmm. one there, and it has a similar pace yeah. uh, as this one. Which and you know when you're when you've been playing games like we have for as long as we have. This pay, I don't think pace is as big an issue no. for a lot of us. No. Again, I, I used to play on machines that were underpowered for what we were running, so I kind of got used to playing stuff at a little slower rate. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bother me that much. And like I said, the 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 the, uh, the power meter sort of filled in the gas for me on this. Overall, I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not the most awesome thing I've ever played, but I thought it was pretty good, especially for a soccer game. Um, the world of Spectrum folks tend to agree with me. 8.26, Mr. Boat, on that one. Uh, we also had uh, Crash gave this a 91%. Pretty high. Pretty Boat. high, uh, yeah. Crash Smash. Sinclair User gave this a 7 out of 10. Uh, and your Sinclair gave this a 90% or a 9 out of 10. And this did, in fact, get the Crash Newsfield Readers Award Best Sports Game 1987, which is odd considering this came out in I don't know why I got it that year. That's what it says here. <laughs> Not a lot going on in between, I guess. And it was also included in the top 100 list. Uh, also, I looked this up on eBay. Uh, they're out there in droves. Is this one of the ones you've got in your massive collection? I don't own this one. I don't own uh, this one. Well, if you ever decide to pick it up, $4 takes this thing to the house wow. all day long. It's an easy nice. pickup, yeah. But overall, much more fun. When I looked at this, I was like, oh, I don't know. And the meter looks kind of scary, but once you sit down and play it, it's not scary. It's almost like a, uh, like a, like a, the predecessor, like say a Neo Geo soccer game. It's mm-hmm. what, you know what I'm saying. It sort yeah. of reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thumbs up. Uh, we did get some hours, uh, some reviews on our uh, Discord channel. Um, and as always, if you are a Patreon supporter, you're welcome to come on to our Discord and post review. D- yeah, man. D Man says, being a big football fan, football that is, uh-huh. and a Spectrum owner, I played this game a lot back in the day and really enjoyed it. Now, though, it just seems horrifically slow. <laughs> Features an interesting power meter for kicking the ball that initially takes some time to get to grips with. But once you have and have then worked out the required angles to take the shots from, then you can basically score at will. We never did that, did we? <laughs> Not even close. Still one of the best representations of playing football in the Specky, along with Emlyn Hughes and Footballer of the Year, though. Six out of ten. Mm. Chris Fold says, I came to this with zero nostalgia vision as it came out when I had a master system, so I was getting into the wonderful world of color and proper controls. Ooh, slam on the spectrum. Man, Fold so, is tough. So I can only judge it based on playing it now and comparing it to what I could have played at the same time. It's a slow game with weird controls, and once you learn the trick, it is impossible to lose. Not fun, not one I would play again, 4 out of 10. You know, our ineptitude is our strength in this game, Boat. That's very true. I, that will be on my tombstone. Um, Mr. Rocket says, I believe the Amstrad or perhaps the C64 <laughs> version of Match Day 2 runs a quite a bit faster than I've never played any of them. So a very short review from Mr. Rocket. Perhaps not a review at all. Yes. This is what Don says, and while this game has better graphics, better AI, and arguably better gameplay, I find myself having more love for the original with its odd chicken strutting players, worse controls, and chugging copyright infringement, infringing match of the day theme as the players walk out. 
This is just a bit less distinctive, and it's unfortunately all too easy to lose the ball in the middle of a mess of players yeah. and not quite know how you came out with it at the end of the scrum. It plays okay if painfully slow, but it's hard to go from the revolution of 16-bit football back to this. Four out of ten. And Graham W. Vebke says, This is my first time playing this game on any system, and it's okay, but not the best football game for its time of release. While in the game itself, you can perform many soccer skills like volleys, lobs, throw-ins, back heels, and headers, and Ooh. the keeper actually dives to make some saves. He does, yeah. he does. I love that. Yeah, that is cool. The game is let down somewhat by the controls being too slow to respond for a football game, and single-player mode is difficult to score. At times, it's like a rugby ruck with players swarming to the ball like bees to a hive, and keeping control of the ball is itself at times difficult. So I didn't have a lot of fun with this, as the controls made it frustrating. Five out of ten. You know, it was not popular amongst our, our buddies here, but I think one of the advantages we have, in this case, it's, it's a disadvantage, but for us it's an advantage, and we haven't played a ton of soccer games over the years. Right. So we don't have, our, our expectations have been raised and raised and raised, and so maybe that's one of the reasons we could just deal with it. Or yeah. Maybe we're just idiots. We don't know the tricks either. That probably helps too. Yeah. Yeah, you got to know the tricks. Um, I want to thank... All of our Patreon supporters out there, you guys really help us keep the show going week after week. I want to thank Andrew Waite, Jeff Owen, David Spencer, Captain Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Bossman Harrington, and Christopher Hassall. And I want to remind all of you that in addition to listening to us on your favorite podcatcher of choice or at anchor.fm slash Our Sinclair, you can watch us live on Twitch every week, twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. You can join the fine folks in the chat like Wishbone, Pixels of Dawn Gaming, Pac Billy, Edvin Helland, uh, Picard 2010, and Graham Vebke. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And of course, Delamort78. So um, it's always a party. If you can join us on Friday nights, we usually tape around 5.30. But next week, Aaron, we will not be taping R. Sinclair at all. Next week, R. Sinclair will be going dark for a week for a very special occasion. Why don't you fill us in on what That's that right. is? Do not, do not fear. We will be back next Friday night. Uh, we will be uh, starting the Thanks for Giving uh, marathon over at Amiga Studios West. Is that East. right? East. I this can't, is I Amiga never Studios remember. West. And which is the arcade in my backyard, in case you're keeping score, uh, where myself, the Brent, and the boat, the meeting of the minds, as we get together for 10 hours of nonstop game action jackson. Uh, who knows what we're going to be playing? We'll probably catch some Spectrum or God knows what. We're going to spin the wheel, we're going to make the deal. 10 straight hours of gaming just for fun. Uh, please join us uh, on Twitch. And if you can't make it to uh, see us on Twitch, we will be uploading these things probably in chunks uh, onto the YouTube channel. So awesome. it should be a good time. 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check the local listings for details. All right, so we'll be back in two weeks Woo. for another new game. And until then, Aaron, rewind tape. And press play.